Hey, well, thanks for another great introduction. In today's episode, we're going to talk about why I'm using three different food pouches to train Mr. Bentley here, the Amstaff, and uh, why you could use three different food pouches at home or how you can just use one food pouch, different little systems and techniques we use as a professional dog trainer to bring a lot of extra excitement and value to the game of food training. And uh, we're going to use Bentley to show you how it's all done. So stay tuned for this episode. All right, so let's dive into why we're using three different food pouches. So I don't always use three different food pouches, and what I'm gonna to say today may contradict one of my prior episodes where we talk about we only use uh, kibble to feed dogs, and that's what I have in this pouch right here. These large pieces of kibble from Royal Canin. This one is the Bulldog brand, but we also use the German Shepherd brand. I'll show you the difference between those two later, but they're a large type of kibble. This is what we feed 99 to 100% of the time. However, sometimes you have a dog that's a little bit of a picky eater, or you wanna make the training session a little more motivating. And that's when we'll go to, like the secret sauce we call it, a different food pouch. So in this food pouch, we actually have cut up hot dogs. And then in this food pouch, we actually have smaller puppy kibbles. Also in pouch number one, we'll call it, that big kibble, we actually have hidden down in here some freeze-dried uh, dog treats. So this is a, a chicken. It's freeze-dried raw food, so you're able to use it um, and keep it in your pouch and it won't go bad. And so you can see how, depending upon what we're doing with the dog, maybe he does something that I really like and he just bangs into a down like really hard and fast or he's super focused on me. Instead of paying him $1 with this piece of kibble, which is great, I mean, this is very powerful, maybe I pay him a $20 piece of the freeze-dried raw food or a $5 piece of hot dog. Or maybe we're using the kibble for a particular thing. The puppy kibble usually has a little bit more fat in it, so they tend to like that a little more. Um, but you can see how, depending upon what we're teaching, what we're training, how the dog's performing, we may access a $1 bill, a $5 bill, a $10 bill, a $20 bill. What can also be said about that, even though we have $1 bills, the, excuse me, that's the freeze-dried one. Let's go back to the kibble. They're all mixed up in there, and I'll tell you why we mix them up in a minute. But this is one, two, three, four, five, this is six bucks in the dog's mind, right? So there is some power to be uh, given when you, you pay more than one piece. So we'll demonstrate that here shortly when we feed Mr. Bentley here different uh, types of kibble and you can see his reaction to the different types. All right, so now we're just down to one pouch. Now, when you saw the three pouches, I'm able to access three different types of food three different values of reward, rocking and rolling with three pouches, but you may not want to walk around with three pouches and look goofy like I do. If you want to just rock one pouch, obviously you can just fill it to the brim with whatever food you're using. However, sometimes to add a little more value to it, to stretch out the duration of a training session, we do something where we layer the food. And what I mean by that is, let's say there's a really powerful treat that the dog likes, we'll put that in the bottom of the pouch. Then we'll put like a medium value reward in the middle of the pouch. And then on the top, we'll top it with the kibble or whatever their day-to-day -day, uh, treat is. I shouldn't say treat, but their kibble, what you're training them with. Their training food is up top. And then what happens is, is you're one, two, three minutes into the training, you're rocking and rolling with the top food, the low value food. Then five, 10 minutes into the training, you're starting to get into that good stuff. That middle area could be hot dogs. Then towards the very end of the training, it's what they've been looking for this whole time. They're 20, 25, 30 minutes into a training session, and now you're finally accessing that really high value treat. What could that be? The freeze dried raw food. It could be steak leftovers from the night before. It could be cheese. Whatever it is that really you know, gets your dogs excited, you're gonna have that in the bottom. The other reason we might do that too, you somewhat are transferring the, the value of the high value treats on the bottom to the low value reward up top. And you're gonna do that by doing this uh, strategy I'm gonna tell you about now. When we layer them three times like that, we'll close it up, take it off, put it in the fridge, fully stacked and packed. And after 12 hours, 24 hours later, when you pull that out from the fridge and you go to use it, all the flavor, all the smell from the high value treats on the bottom and the medium value treats in the middle are gonna find their way into the top, uh, the treats on top or the kibble on top. So that flavor and that smell is gonna transfer over and it just lends into a, a great experience for the dog all the way around. 
In another episode, we'll talk about these types of pouches and the other type of equipment you can use to lend to uh, itself to improve your training. But for now, uh, we'll just dive into the three bag method. So let me check real quick, make sure I got them lined up. Almost always the low values are on the right. Then the, me the, the middle ones or the higher value is gonna be to my left, sometimes center. So we'll show you what that looks like now. We'll go through a little repertoire with him and feed him different value rewards based on how he performs. So watch, yes, $1. In fact, that was a piece cut in half, so it's 50 cents. Sit, yes. But see, I really liked what he did there, so I'm gonna dig in for a hot dog and pay him for that. And it doesn't matter that I'm paying him. Look, another hot dog, that's another five bucks. Down, yes, there's another $5 bill. Even though that hot dog came like five, 10 seconds after he completed the command, it doesn't matter because if you understand marker training, I marked to the millisecond what I loved about it at the speed of sound. So let's try it again. Let's see how he does on that SIT. Sit, yes. I would say that sit was worth five bucks to me. Now on the next one, I'm gonna sneak in from deep in my $1 pouch. Deep down in there are $20 ones hiding, and that's the freeze-dried chicken. Down, yes. So he's thinking to himself, man, I gotta do downs more often because they pay me the big bucks. And you can imagine that if your dog is struggling with something and you're trying to build a little more value to that command, that's when you bring in the heavy artillery. That's when you bring out the hot dogs, the freeze-dried food. I do not recommend training your dog all day, every day on the good stuff then there's, you can't go any further than that. So train them on the $1 bills, and then you always have the five tens and 20s to help you through anything you might be struggling with. Specifically, one of the things pretty much every dog struggles with is, yeah, great, he knows sit and down and heal, but when you put that around distractions, like you go somewhere public, like behind me, a park with a bunch of kids, I need him sucked into me, and I need to let him know, hey, guess what, today we're training with fives and tens and 20s. So I hope that makes sense to you. And that's the three bag method or the layered system as we call it. And uh, I hope it, it, it finds its way into your training program and I hope you find value in it. And if you have any questions about it, please post them in the comments below. And if you like what you see, make sure to let Will know over at the Fenrir Canine Training Channel how much uh, you like seeing our channel. And uh, if you want more of this, make sure to check out our channel, American Standard Dog Training, where we have Three to four new dogs every month coming in. Uh, next month, we got a, a couple of great animals coming in. We're starting from scratch with them, so you're gonna make sure you wanna watch that and see how we progress through the steps using the three bag method, using the layered uh, one bag system to see how we can get that dog from a wild animal into a nice, well-behaved dog like Mr. Bentley here. So we'll see you on the next video. Good boy, sit.